Hello, so I'm George Gilbert, a lecturer in Modern Russian History at the University of Southampton, and this is the second of five clips I'm going to record on why the 1917 revolution occurred. So the first clip that I talked about was kind of about social and economic change, kind of setting the scene of some of the wider structural processes in the Russian Empire. Um, I just want to talk now about something else that I think also falls into that kind of longer term causes bracket. And that's kind of about the role of ideologies and kind of political radicalism in, in, in Russia. Um, I think it's worth dedicating an own clip of this, even if it's quite brief, simply because it's it's dominated so much historical writing. What we as historians call historiography, meaning historical writing. So much of that is taken up with the rise of kind of political radicalism and different ideologies in Russia. And one thing I think makes Russian history quite unique is it really is such a fascinating case study of so many different types of ideology from the 19th century into the 20th. And of course, the Soviet Union, what what comes around after 1917 occurs, is a big part of that. But beforehand, in the revolutionary period, and indeed even earlier, you can see ideas play a huge role in the course of Russian history. A very important part of that is the relationship between Russia on the one hand and the West and which one of these ideologies can be considered to be native or somehow representative of conditions in Russia. It's something that really occurs most strongly during and after Peter the Great, a Tsar, although he does not start it by any means. We can think about other important processes here too. For example, the French Revolution of 1799 had enormous impact in Russia, both in terms of conservatives who wanted to preserve Russia into what they saw as a positive frame, what it was and what it should be in their mind, as opposed to, say, Westernisers, who thought that the West had important lessons that could be used uh, for Russia. There were important lessons to learn from the French Revolution and other events occurring in Europe in the 19th century. Um, so if we just kind of zoom in on that, I realise some of those are quite kind of big ideas, we might want to think then longer term, what are we thinking is the most important? Well, you might think in an ideological sense, the role of socialism and Marxism, of course, plays an important role, and it would come to be increasingly important during and up to 1917 itself. Um, we might also think of the, um, the role of terrorism in Russia, which of course is uh, a doctrine of violence with particular political prerogatives but links in quite closely to some of these radical ideas that appear during the 19th century. We might also think in terms of anti-autocratic ideas, liberalism plays a big role, not always insurrectionist, anti-Tsarist uh, ideologies or movements. Some of them do agitate for reform of quite a far, far reaching and sweeping variety, but a more gradualist type of change that maybe could work potentially within Tsarist autocracy. So it's important to distinguish between those different currents. Thinking in a little bit more depth about some of those then. So if we think of, for example, on the one hand, we've got socialism and Marxism, and on the other, we've got Russian liberalism. It might be worth giving you a few ideas of some of these key people. So thinking of the Marxists then, a very well-known example is, of course, the leader of the Bolshevik Party during 1917, and eventually the first uh, chairman of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, Vladimir Lenin. Um, he's only one of several figures active from the late 19th century in the wider milieu of the Russian Social Democratic Workers' Party. This is something that's established in 1898. Much of its activism occurs outside of Russia because, naturally, revolutionary movements are closely monitored and subjugated within the boards of the Russian Empire itself. And it's something that in 1903 splits into two factions that will play an important role in Russian history. On the one hand, the Bolsheviks, through, which provide some of uh, the Soviet Union's most notorious early exponents, and also the Mensheviks on the other, who would play an important role, the so-called majoritarian and minority faction within Russian social democracy. And it's important to realise what we are talking here is about the trend is the social democratic movement in Russia. Social democracy is not something that's unique to the Russian Empire. It plays an enormously important role in German history, for instance. Indeed, in the same period, many of the Reichstag, the parliaments, deputies are from the social democratic movements and parties, but it also plays a role in British history, it plays a role in Spain, it plays a role in France, it plays a role indeed in other parts of the globe too. Latin America had become extremely important. In many different countries then, social democracy is a very important political ideology. Often it's linked with agitation for workers' rights, 
a somewhat universalist doctrine maybe, but also one that thinks about diff- particular political grievances, things like workers' insurance and the shortening of the working day. Trade union identity is often very important to social democratic parties. And Russia is indeed no exception to that. On the other hand, though, we've got other types of, um, if you like, political, you might use the term advisedly, radicals. One of these examples is the Socialist Revolutionary Party, abbreviated to the SRs. This is something that was founded in 1901. It's a very interesting political formation. It plays an important role in Russian history, up to and including the year 1917 itself, when it has a very strong presence indeed in the um, Constituent Assembly. But also, it has a very great notoriety for its involvement in violence. Its combat organisation um, is very successful in assassinating a series of government figures in the early years of the 20th century. Among the most high-profile casualties are Viktor von Ple- uh, Vyacheslav von Pleva, uh, Minister of the Interior, and indeed his predecessor, Dmitry Sipyagin, is assassinated two years before. So Pleva in 1904 and Sipyagin in 1902 are both assassinated by the SRs. Um, Indeed, they also managed to assassinate um, Grand Duke Sergei, uh, the Tsar's uncle, in January 1905. So it's a very dangerous time to be involved in Russian autocracy, or indeed in the highest echelons of the Russian establishment in the early 20th century. You might want to think then, these parties, like the Socialist Revolutionaries and the Social Democrats, do have some shared grievances and some shared causes, like the idea of a social revolution in Russia, but there's also very pronounced differences between them too. Ideologically, emotionally and practically, they're often quite distinct. And you will know if you look at the material from the period, much of which is available online, that the leading uh, figures of these parties and groups, and indeed many of their activists at a lower level, do ceaselessly argue and bicker. One of the most notable features of the revolutionary movement before 1905 is the pronounced disagreement within it. And when you're thinking of a question like, why wasn't revolution initiated earlier, you might want to think of that as a particular uh, motive or particular factor. The fact that revolutionary movements were heavily prescribed by the government, but also couldn't agree with one another. There There was division and split within them, and they only seemed to come together at certain points in history. You might also link this to a point that I mentioned in the first of these clips, which is the role of the strike movement. The strike movement was partly led from the bottom by workers and their grievances, which of course provided the vital material to build these causes around, but also um, activists and leaders from particular political parties and different groups play an increasingly important role in the final years of the 19th century and indeed in the early years of the 20th. They often play a very important role in the politicisation of these strikes, something that occurs very strongly in the time of the 1905 revolution itself. One other sort of opposition that I mentioned a minute ago, but it's worth maybe dwelling on for a minute or two here, is the role of Russian liberals. So one example of this is the liberation campaign in the early early 20th century, led by Petr Struve, a very famous liberal thinker. Um, and then, of course, the banquet campaign of November to December 1904. Many of Russian, Russia's liberals do realise the need for increasing social change in Russia. They're very critical, often, of Russia's traditional social estates. But they seek different ways for which to bring about this change than their rivals on the radical left. The, they often agitate for gradualist and reformist solutions. So one, one example of this that becomes extremely important is the question of constitutionalism and the question of political change through constitutional means. Constitutionalism versus revolution is, in certain respects, the dilemma of the Russian oppositional movement in the early 20th century. And indeed, it's something that becomes under increasing focus and purview around the time of the 1905 revolution itself. So that's really all I wanted to say briefly about kind of the question of kind of political radicalism and the question of opposition in Russia. Um, The next short clip I'd like to record for you then is about the 1905 revolution itself, which is an important precursor of 1917, an important uh, period on the road to kind of great, if you like, change of different types in Russia in the final years of Tsarism.